Girish Karnad is one of the greatest dramatists of India. He is a very good actor and has acted not only on the stage but also in a number of movies. He has about six plays to his credit which include Ayadi, Hayavadana and Tughlaq. Here in Hayavadana the plot comes from Kadasarit Sagara, an ancient collection of stories in Sanskrit. But Karnad's play is mainly based on Thomas Mann's retelling of the story of the transposed heads. As the curtain rises for Act 1, we can find an empty stage except for a chair at the center. Bhagavada, the narrator, and the musicians are sitting at the back. A mask of Lord Ganesha is bought and kept on a chair. The play opens with Bhagavada singing verses in praise of Lord Ganesha and the musicians accompany him playing music. The invocation to Lord Ganesha is done to bless the play with success. However, it is ironic that Lord Ganesha, the destroyer of incompleteness, is himself the embodiment of imperfection and incompleteness. Bhagavada next introduces the setting of the play. The action takes place in Dharmapura, ruled by the famous king Dharmashila. Two young and inseparable friends, Kapila and Devadatta, lives there. Their friendship is very famous and the people of Dharmapura considers them like Leva and Kusha, Rama and Lakshmana, Krishna and Balarama. Devadatta is the only son of the wise Brahmin Vidyasagara and is handsome. He is a man of intellect and there is no one in Dharmapura who can excel him in debate, poetry or any sort of intellectual activities. Kapila, on the other hand, belongs to the lower strata of society. He is the only son of ironsmith Lohida. He is dark but is in possession of a very athletic body. He is a wrestler and is unparalleled in drive and daring. While Bhagavada was continuing the story, the narration gets interrupted by a cry from the off stage. An actor rushes into the stage and Bhagavada finds that he is nervous. Bhagavada scolds him for showing pranks before the audience and interrupting the staging of the play. The actor, who is frightened, reveals to Bhagavada that he has seen a strange creature, Hayavadana, one with a human body and the head of a horse. Bhagavada is also surprised on seeing the strange features of Hayavadana. At first, he doubts that Hayavadana is playing some trick and tries to pull off the mask of the horse. The actor also joins him in this futile attempt. With great astonishment, Bhagavada realizes that the head is a real one. Hayavadana then narrates his story in order to quench the curiosity of Bhagavada and the actor. Hayavadana's mother was the princess of Karnataka. She fell in love with the horse of a prince who came to attend her Swayamvara. She insisted on having that white stallion and was ultimately married off to the horse. After 15 years of married life, one day the horse disappeared and a handsome celestial being, a Gandharva, stood before her. He was undergoing some curse and 15 years of life with a human being had revived him back to the original form. The Gandharva asked her to accompany him to the, his heavenly abode. She declined his instructions and he cursed her to become a mare. On becoming a female horse, she ran away to the family of horses. Hayavadana, the child born of the relationship, was left behind with nobody to take care of. This strange identity of half man and half horse proved to be a trouble to Hayavadana. He wanted to get rid of his horse face. He visited many holy places and sought the help of many sages, but nothing helped. Bhagavada feels pity for him 
and advises him to go to the Kali temple on the mountain of Chitragur. The goddess is believed to be a benevolent one who always grants the wishes of her devotees. Hayavadana agrees with that idea and thanks Bhagavada for his guidance. He proceeds for the temple with the actor. After Hayavadana's departure, the play resumes. Bhagavada continues the narration. We are brought back to the story of Devadatta and Kapila. We find Devadatta sitting on a chair. He is lost in thought and Kapila enters next. Kapila wants to know why Devadatta failed to turn up at the gymnasium the previous evening. Kapila continues to talk about his experiences in the gymnasium. Kapila realizes that Devadatta is in a state of distress and is not paying attention. Upon Kapila's compulsion, Devadatta discloses that he is deeply affected by the enchanting beauty of a young lady. She seems to him to be Shyamanaiga born out of the genius of Kalidasa. Devadatta considers her as an inevitable source of inspiration for his progress as a poet. Devadatta feels dejected as he considers himself unworthy of getting her as his wife. However, Kapila tries to instill confidence in Devadatta and gets ready to become his messenger. He swears to win her for him. Devadatta goes on to swear that if he ever gets her as his wife, he would sacrifice his head to Lord Rudra and his two arms to Goddess Kali. Kapila leaves for Pavanavidhi, the place where she resides. Devadatta doesn't know her name and the only hint he provides Kapila is that her house door is having the engraving of a double-headed bird. Kapila searches for her house and ultimately succeeds in meeting the dream girl of Devadatta. He conveys the message of Devadatta. However, Kapila starts nurturing a secret desire for her and feels that Devadatta will be too delicate a man to meet the requirements of Padmini. He imagines himself more suitable for Padmini. Devadatta's family is known for wisdom and learning and Padmini belongs to a rich family of merchants. Devadatta marries Padmini with the blessings of both families. Kapila becomes a frequent visitor to Devadatta's house and becomes a favorite of Padmini. Though both of them continue to be friends, Devadatta feels that Kapila is trying to spoil his most personal and intimate moments with Padmini. Very soon, Padmini becomes pregnant and Devadatta and Padmini along with Kapila plan for a short visit to Ujjain. Devadatta is very much concerned about Padmini's health and safety. However, Padmini adopts a carefree attitude and defends herself saying that she is not the first woman in the world to become pregnant. Looking out of the window, Padmini awaits the arrival of Kapila. In an aside, Devadatta contemplates on the change in Kapila's behavior. Devadatta is not in favor of a journey with Kapila. Upon seeing the attitude of her husband, Padmini agrees to cancel the trip. Devadatta is astonished by her decision. However, the couple plans to have a trip to Ujjain later. Devadatta is greatly relieved by her decision and he tries to please Padmini by asserting that he is not jealous of Kapila. Shortly, Kapila arrives and begs pardon for being late. He had some delay in arranging the cart for the journey. He lost time arguing with the cartman to replace an ox in bad shape. Devadatta informs him that the trip is cancelled. 
a disappointed Kabila decides to return the cart. Kabila realizes that he is very much attached to Padmini. He finds his life empty without her and is losing hold of his life. As he starts to go, Padmini comes in and announces that they are going for the trip. She tries to convince her husband and pleads him not to be angry. She doesn't want Kabila to be disappointed. The three of them start the journey and Kabila drives the cart. Padmini encourages Kabila at regular intervals. She compares the cart driving skills of her husband and Kabila and lavishes praise on the way Kabila controls the cart. On the way, they stop for a while and climbs down the cart. Padmini's remark about the fortunate lady's flower instigates Kabila to fetch it for her. He takes off his shirt, pulls up his dhoti and climbs the tree like an ape. Padmini is fascinated by the athletic body of Kapila and the admiration is summed up in her words. What an ethereal shape, such a broad back, like an ocean with muscles rippling across it. Devadatta is able to perceive the progress of events. He feels that it is pointless to blame Padmini as no woman could resist Kapila. He could perceive Padmini's intense longing for him and flames leaping up from her eyes. Kapila brings the fortunate lady's flowers to Padmini. He then starts providing a description of that place. The hermitage of poet Vyasa is there on the banks of river Bhargavi. There are temples of Rudra and Kali nearby. With a shock, Devadatta is reminded of his promises to Lord Rudra and Goddess Kali, which he has not fulfilled yet. He had earlier promised to offer his head to Lord Rudra and his two arms to Goddess Kali. Kabila suggests to go to the temple of Rudra. Padmini also agrees while Devadatta stays back. After a little hesitation, Kapila proceeds to the temple of Rudra with Padmini. Devadatta bids goodbye to them and proceeds to the temple of Kali. He begs forgiveness for not fulfilling his promise and he chops off his head with a sword kept there. On their return, Padmini and Kapila finds that Devadatta is missing. Kapila is worried and he goes out in search of him. He reaches the temple of Kali and finds the agonizing scene. Kapila is stricken with guilt and he finds himself responsible for the death of Devadatta. He decides to follow the path of Devadatta and sacrifices his head to Goddess Kali. After waiting for some time, Padmini leaves to the temple of Kali. In the darkness, she stumbles over the dead bodies of Kapila and Devadatta. She blames both of them for killing themselves and leaving her alone. A perplexed Padmini realizes that people may accuse her for the death of both Devadatta and Kapila. The people of Dharmapura may assume that the friends fought and died for her. She gets ready to sacrifice her life. Suddenly, Goddess Kali intervenes. The goddess appears to have woken up from her sleep and is still yawning. Padmini expresses her mental anguish and pleads for help. Kali understands her and asks her to put the heads on their bodies and press the sword on their necks and they would be they would come back to life padmini implores goddess kali to explain why she did not stop devadatta and kapila from dying goddess kali replies that she is annoyed with devadatta as he had promised his head 
to Lord Rudra and arms to her. He offered his head to her as he was not able to reach the temple of Lord Rudra. In the case of Kapila, she found him lying. He claimed that he was dying for friendship. But in reality, Kapila was afraid of the people accusing him of killing Devadatta in order to get Padmini. Further, Kapila did not offer a word of praise for Goddess Kali. Now, Goddess Kali wants Padmini to hurry up. Padmini in haste puts the heads on the wrong bodies. She places the head of Devadatta on Kapila's body and that of Kapila on Devadatta's body and presses with the sword. She does namaskara to the goddess and waits for the bodies to come alive. Both of them come alive and there is lot of fun and laughter. And they, they start celebrating their second life. The joy is however short-lived as Kapila with Devadatta's body claims Padmini as his wife. He argues that it is with this body that Padmini got married and the child she is having in her womb is the seed of that body. Devadatta comes up with the theory of the superiority of the head. Kapila remains adamant on his stand of claiming Padmini. Finally, they decide to go to a wise saint in order to get a solution for this puzzling situation. The sage asserts the superiority of the head and the man with Devadatta's head is allowed to claim Padmini as his wife. Devadatta and Padmini leaves for Dharmapura with joy and a dejected Kapila leaves for the jungle.